Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome back to the Rock Nerd Radio Show here on YouTube. You know, I've compared the Scarlet Spider and Tombstone from this new Spider-Man retro card wave. I have one more figure to take a look at, and that's going to be the new Jack-O-Lantern figure. We're doing this in another Which Is Better style comparison. However, for the first time ever on my channel, I am comparing three figures, uh, three Jack-O-Lantern figures together to determine which one of them really is better. Come geek out with us on the Rock Nerd Radio Show. So like I said in my intro, this is the first time ever when I'm doing a Which Is Better comparison that I am comparing three versions of the same character. Now it does need to be said that technically the three versions of this code name are represented. These are technically three different people. So if you are a completist of characters, you might want to just keep all three of these if you have all three. Um, there was a time where I was definitely a completist and wanted to have every version of every character ever. And uh, once I really got a, got to make a you know display and really showcase my stuff, certain characters, I said, all right, maybe just one of each. And uh, Jack-O-Lantern is one. So we're going to try to find my ideal Jack-O-Lantern here. Now, let's talk about the paint and overall appearance of all these characters. We are going to start with the Spider-Man Classics one. And uh, I got to say, this one looked really cool when it came out. Um, one of the things I love about this one is the head because it has these crazy flame effects. It looks really cool, and you will see there's a button here. It doesn't work on mine anymore, but uh, the head used to light up. Now, it would just kind of glow red, but it was a neat touch. When this figure came out, Jack-O-Lantern, or whoever was behind the Jack-O-Lantern costume, was sporting this costume. Um, I It, it was uh, like Civil War era, I want to say. Maybe even predated that a little bit. But uh, I loved the pumpkin... Uh, Let's zoom in on that. There we go. The uh, pumpkin knee pads there. It looked really cool. The chain, the, the armor, like chainmail type armor on the, or uh, scale armor on the uh, arms is sculpted. So this is not painted, it's sculpted. Even there on the crotch, it is uh, sculpted. And it has a really nice, cool looking belt that kind of helps break up the color from this sea of green. So really, a really cool looking jack-o'-lantern. Um, the paint on it is very nice. The appearance looks pretty nice. The one thing uh, that I didn't like, and this was early Hasbro, late Toy Biz, were just like the open hands that you could articulate to like kind of make a fist. It never looked all that great or convincing. So it almost looked like he just wanted to like tell you to come here or something. Um, but that is the first one. Moving him back and taking a look at our Absorbing Man Jack-O-Lantern. This was more Jack-O-Lantern as it, he appeared in the Agent Venom series. I ended up becoming quite the uh, main nemesis for Agent Venom, I want to say. But this is on a very lanky Marvel Legends-style body, to the point where the head is almost a little too big. I understand that the guy's mask is a, is a pumpkin head, uh, a flaming pumpkin head, but this almost looks a little too big for the body. In fact, it does cause some balancing issues. Um, I've always had a hard time getting this character, this figure, to balance. Um, it, it, the, the Ghost Marvel Legends figure that came out is on this body too. It is super lanky. It still has weird hip joints, like, like they don't move like regular legs, uh, because again, they are these ball jointed hips. Um, but I do like the pumpkin bombs in the, in the, in the satchel here. That does, that is a nice touch. I like the web gear. It's not terrible. I like the, you know, the, the straps that are painted. The paint on it is quite nice. Um, all things considered. But uh, yeah, he's a little funky to get to stand up, so I'm just going to prop him back here. And that brings us to our most recent one, which came from a retro card. And uh, I feel like as time went on, the jack-o'-lantern figures just got more and more flames on their on their head. Like this one, like the back is just engulfed in flame. Um, but it does look really cool. It does have sculpted armor here on the on the body. Um, and then, of course, we have different shades of green moving down the body. Um, not a whole lot of paint detail on this one, I have to be honest. Um, however, when I'm looking at it, the paint does look really good. And, you know, the details of the pumpkin bomb sticking out, like they are things that he can take off and throw, I do like a lot. Um, granted, this is like your standard guy who wears boots and gloves kind of Marvel Legends figure. But in terms of paint and overall appearance... You know, the older figures, like those those Toy Biz era, early Hasbro, the paint and sculpt really kind of knocked it out of the park. So even though it's not my personal favorite look, 
I'm going to give my round one to my Spider-Man Classic Jack-O-Lantern because he's got just really cool paintwork, really nice detail, and uh, just looks really great overall. My next round is about articulation. And if I go over all three of these guys' articulation in full, we're going to be here a while. So I'm going to do kind of a quick version. We're going to start with our new retro card version. And this is a standard Marvel Legends figure. It's got butterfly joints, even with that sculpted armor that I really like. Uh, he is pinless. Again, it doesn't add to the joint, to the movement, the, uh, you know, the ability to pose the character. It just looks nice. Um, I do like that the head can move pretty well as well. That is really cool to me. And uh, just like, you know, the belt is sculpted up, up to the, uh, uh, up to the, this part of the body. So when you rotate, it doesn't get in the way. It doesn't bend or look funny. It does look good. So standard Marvel Legends, Legends articulation as we would come to expect it, but just looks really good, you know, and just like even down to like it has boot cut, it's nice. So, you know, that that is very nice articulation. This one's articulation from the Absorbing Man Wave. Uh, it, it has like clicky joints. Now, like you don't hear it in the rotation here, but the web gear kind of impedes how much it can really move. But like when I move the, 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 the chest here, you hear that click and... Uh, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. I think a lot of them have clicks, but, like, the arms also have clicks. And it doesn't make for, like, smooth posing because there's only... Oop, I don't want to break that. Um, there's only, like, so many positions you can put it in. Um, and, like, they're weirdly skinny, these arms. It almost works against the character. And it doesn't have regular wrist rotation. Like, the whole, um, like, lower arm rotates which also means that the hands don't have a whole lot of articulation, if any. Um, it's really just movement here at the at the at this tiny wrist. Again, it has these ball-jointed hips, which I've talked about already, and uh, they, they don't move very well. There's nothing at the boot cut either. Um, so he's probably close to the weakest in terms of articulation. We're going to look at the Spider-Man Classics version, and uh, this one actually had really nice articulation, um, you know, it, it didn't have anything at the chest, like, you know, bend-wise, but it could rotate, and the belt was sculpted up here, so the belt didn't really get in the way. Legs are on ball joints, but they move better than my Absorbing Man one does. Um, it actually has really nice boot cut and toe articulation, which, uh, we just kind of started getting back with figures, but also it had ankle rockers at a time where figures didn't really have ankle rockers. There is a reason for that. This thing might have had some of the best articulation, if not for the right arm. Um, there was an action gimmick. You can see there's a tab in his hand where it would throw these very large pumpkin bombs. And uh, I believe if you raise the hand, it would also turn, it would trigger the mechanism to turn the light on in the head. So uh, you can't really pose this arm. It, it, it is pretty much that or, uh, you know, or this. <laughs> or maybe you can... Stick it out a little, but um, because of this spring-loaded gimmick, which a lot of these later era figures kind of had, um, it kind of stops you from being able to dynamically pose at least the right arm. So with all that said, my round for articulation is going to my new vintage card jack-o'-lantern. Taking a look at the accessories, we're going to start off with the Spider-Man Classics jack-o'-lantern first. And uh, he came with this awesome, awesome very just stylized glider, you know, goblin glider, whatever you want to call it. It's got pumpkins, it's got a face on it, and he fits on it just so well. Uh, as I said, there are ankle rockers, which were there so that you could easily get him to fit, and you could kind of curl the toes up with that toe articulation to help lock him in place. Now, there were some, uh, you know, the, the, the ball-jointed hips kind of let you pose him out a little bit, but um, he looks really good on this, if not a little back heavy. You kind of got to lean him forward. But uh, just looks really nice on this glider. He also came with very large pumpkins that he could throw. I couldn't actually find mine. I don't know where they are, but I'll put a picture up on the screen now. The pumpkins were really, really large and kind of unsightly. In fact, having him just hold them would be a little weird. So uh, it looks pretty good so far. I'm going to move him off to the side as we take a look. And our next jack-o'-lantern from the Absorbing Man Wave. And uh, this jack-o'-lantern, he's already holding this scythe. And again, because of the way the hands are, the weapons have like an extra handle. So like it can loop around the hand, which isn't a bad way to do it. But uh, he has this scythe. He also came with a very small pumpkin bomb 
cast in a like translucent orangey yellow. So there is that as well that he came with. And he also came with his uh, preferred method of transport in the comics, like a flame broom. But this thing is really large. And because of his articulation and the way he moves, there was, I could never really find like a good way for him to hold it. Um, also the hands just were weirdly sized. But anyway, I could never really find a good way for him to hold it without like having to hold it out in front of him like this. So as I said, it's not the worst accessories, but also maybe not the best executed accessories. Um, I'm just going to leave this jack just kind of propped up here. That brings us to our last jack-o'-lantern from the retro card wave. And uh, one of the cool things that you might not know if you don't have this figure in hand already is that uh, this pumpkin bomb right here does peg onto his belt. You can see there's a peg. So uh, you can have him hold this pumpkin bomb. It, uh, it fits relatively well in his hand. His hand kind of goes around it, so he can actually hold this. Um, there isn't much detail on this pumpkin bomb. It just kind of looks like an orange ball, but he does hold it tight, which is nice. And if you don't want him to hold it, there's always, you can just tab it right back into the belt, which is great use of weapon storage. You don't just have loose weapons anywhere. Um, he comes with extra hands. There is another fist and an open hand. So you do have hand options with him. And like, look at that, the, the glove marks on the hand. That looks really cool. He also comes with this type of glider and uh, obviously two pegs, he can stand on it. This little piece on the bottom comes out like this. So it leaves you with a hole like this. And if you have any of the previous like goblin type flight stands, I think this came with Green Goblin. Um, you can actually plug this in like that. And then you can bounce your jack-o'-lantern on this like flight disc if you want. Um, I'll try to put him back a little bit, but still he's, he's a little out of frame, but you, you get what I'm going for. You can dynamically pose this as well. You could also just take a flight stand and stick, you know, stick him on it and not have to worry about this. But this doesn't look half bad for Jack-O-Lantern. I'm going to take this jack down real quick. Now, all this said, um, I have to be honest, my favorite type of flight rig for Jack-O-Lantern is this one. I really, really like this Jack-O-Lantern's, um, you know, glider. However, in terms of accessories altogether, I think this one, our new one from the Retro Card, has the best ones. He has a pumpkin bomb that he can store, holds very easily, has a cool glider, has extra hands. So uh, I'm giving round three to our Retro Card Jack-O-Lantern. All right, round four is about the price of these figures. Now, here's the thing. I, I forget what year this Jack-O-Lantern came out, but I can't seem to find a whole lot of consistency with his selling prices. Some of them I've seen go as high as 60. Some I've seen go as low as six. It also depends on condition. So uh, average is around $20 for this figure. Uh, sometimes complete, sometimes not. Uh, so that's where you're at with that. Again, probably only finding it in like vintage toy stores or on eBay or something like that. Um, I haven't seen this one listed on Facebook much either. I feel like people have kind of forgotten about this jack-o'-lantern. So uh, around 20, maybe more, maybe less. You really got to kind of hedge your bets here and figure out which one or where you're going to want to get them from. Our Absorbing Man Wave version of Jack-O-Lantern goes from anywhere between $25 to $30 on the secondary market. Again, probably not finding him in stores, although I do remember when the Absorbing Man Wave was out, he seemed to be a peg warmer. I remember seeing him a lot, but never really seeing him move. Uh, to the point where I thought maybe I wanted to buy another one to try to make a custom jack-o'-lantern just so I could really use the head. But uh, never ended up doing that with this one. I did make a custom jack-o'-lantern I'll talk about in just a moment. But finally, our new one on the retro card, $25. Available online, maybe even in stores now, depending where you look. So uh, I'm going to give our price and availability round to our current release jack-o'-lantern from that retro card. Because uh, as of this recording in, Mar in April of 2024... He is, uh, he's available. You can probably find him and uh, probably for a decent price. Finally, let's talk about the display compatibility of this figure. So first off, as time goes on, the shape and overall look of these figures kind of change. Where my collection is now, a lot of my Marvel Legends figures don't have the ball jointed hips or anything. And uh, I'm trying to go with a collection that kind of highlights the most well-known, best-known version of a character. As I said, these are all three different people underneath the pumpkin head. 
Um, these are all, while they are all jack-o'-lantern, they're all different people under that suit. So this one came out at a time where it was like a little bit post-Marvel Civil War. And this was kind of how I remember that character looking in Civil War until I think Punisher shot him in the head. Um, <laughs> this character here in the middle, this jack-o'-lantern, that was how he looked when he fought Agent Venom. And, you know, again, not a bad figure, not a bad era. I really like that Rick Remender Agent Venom comic. Just don't love the way that this figure was executed personally. This jack-o'-lantern, our vintage card one, is like the most classic look of a jack-o'-lantern I can think of. It is like his original appearance look. There was even an old Toy Biz figure before the Marvel Legends days, essentially in this look. Um, the I, I mentioned making a custom jack-o'-lantern, and actually what I did was I took an, an extra Agent Venom that I found when they were on clearance at my local Walgreens and painted it to be somewhat similar to this and used this head, because this head, while it's not on a ball joint, does come off and fit on a uh, on the Agent Venom body. Um, so that was like my custom jack-o'-lantern that I was using for a while, but I've always really wanted this one. This was like my look of a jack-o'-lantern when I think of him. Um, I think of this one. I, I had, I want to say, that old Toy Biz one. I had a card of Jack-O-Lantern, a trading card, where he was in this getup. And this was really the one that I think of. So if I can only have one Jack-O-Lantern in my display, which I am planning, uh, it is going to be our retro card one. So he wins out with almost a perfect score of 4-1. Uh, the the, uh, the Spider-Man Classic took our first round, and unfortunately, the Observing Man one didn't win a single round. So... Uh, this is the one who wins out. Oh, God, he took off the other one's head. <laughs> but uh, no, this jack-o'-lantern really does win out this round of which is better, this edition of which is better. And uh, his feet kind of fit on this glider, so I might end up keeping this glider because, you know, I just got to pose him up a little bit and he will stand on this. Um, I'm, I'm actually very impressed that this jack-o'-lantern fits on this glider. Of course, now I'm trying to do it on camera. He doesn't want to do it, but... Uh, it, it kind of works, um, but if we're going appropriate comic-wise, then I'm going to be using this gold glider. But uh, in all seriousness, <laughs> ripping off heads aside, this is the jack-o'-lantern I've been hoping to get for quite a while. So uh, he is, I think, the one I'm going to be going with. Um, as you can probably tell from all the jack-o'-lantern figures I have, I've been collecting Legends for a while. And honestly, like I said, this is the jack-o'-lantern I want. Yes, they're all different people under those masks. But like I said, I'm only looking to have one on my shelf, and it's going to be this one. Let me know what you think about all the jack-o'-lantern figures in the comments below. Uh, which one are you going with? Do you even care? Did you have any of the previous ones? I'd love to know your opinion. And until next time, I've been Dan, you've all been pretty awesome, and I'll see you around.